Previously, we introduced the concepts of separable and entangled multi-qubit systems, but we did this by constructing these type of states out of simple examples. However, now that we have the formal definition for a single qubit, we can generalize it for states composed of more than one qubit. Let's recall that we said that our qubit is represented by a column vector with components alpha zero and alpha one, where alpha zero and alpha one are complex numbers that when we take their modulus squared represent the probability of measuring either state zero or state one. Therefore, when we add them together, they must be equal to one. Now, another way to represent this is by saying that alpha zero is a prefactor pre-multiplying state one zero plus prefactor of alpha one multiplying state zero one, which is equal to alpha zero state zero plus alpha one state one. So then we can say that our qubit is a general superposition of state zero and state one. And we said that these two states represent what is known as a basis. Specifically, we call this the computational or the bit basis, which is composed of these two states that we say are orthonormal. And by orthonormal, what we mean is that they're orthogonal to each other, because when we take the inner product between the two of them, we get zero. And they're normalized, because the inner product of each of them with itself is equal to one. Now, in the case of multiple qubits, we can generalize this definition for our quantum state by using the Kronecker product. So we can say that, for example, for two qubits, we have a basis composed of all the states that are combinations of state zero and state one. So with this notation, what we mean is that we have state zero tensor zero, state zero tensor one, one tensor zero, and one tensor one. And then we can say that a general state for two qubits is represented by a linear combination of all possible basis states. So we will have alpha zero, state zero, zero, plus alpha one, state zero, one, alpha two, state one, zero, alpha three, state one, one. Where all these alphas, just like for the single qubit, are complex numbers, and they also represent probabilities when we take their modulus squared. Therefore, the sum of all of them must be equal to one, with i going from zero to two to the n minus one, where n is the number of qubits. So in general, the state for a multi-qubit system can be represented as a sum of states going from zero to two to the n minus one, of some coefficient alpha sub i multiply with state i. Where again, all these alpha sub i's are complex numbers that when we take their modulus squared and add them together, we get one. Now, one notational node we should make here is that here we're changing this variable i from zero to two to the n minus one, where these i's represent integers. So if we were to directly replace integers in this cat notation, let's say for two qubits, we will have q is equal to the sum of i from zero to two to the two minus one of alpha i i, we will get alpha zero state zero plus alpha one state one. But notice here, if we're replacing i directly, we get alpha two state two plus alpha three state three. And this is a little bit of abuse of notation because what we really mean by this integer numbers here is the binary representation of them. So what we mean by zero, one, two, and three here is actually the binary representation of these integers using as many bits as we have in our system. So what this really means is what we had here above, where of course, as we mentioned before, zero, zero means zero tensor zero, 0, 1 means 0, tensor 1, and so on. And of course, we can also express this in column notation as a column vector with components alpha 0, alpha 1, all the way down to alpha 2 to the n minus 1. And this will be the definition of our quantum state for our n qubit quantum system. And this expression 
is valid for both entangled and separable states. What makes them different from each other will be the values that this alpha sub i's take. For certain values of alpha sub i's, our states are factorizable, making them separable. And in other cases, as we will see, some of these alphas will be such that there's no way to factorize the state and therefore we say it's entangled. So now let's take a look at a few simple examples using Qiskit. So here using the state vector class, we can define a state Q by using the from label function. And if we, for example, pass state plus plus plus, we know this is going to be separable because what this means is that we're generating the state plus tensor plus tensor plus, which is a definite state for the three separate qubits. We see that we get an equal superposition state with two to the three or eight elements. And we can also show that this is separable if we start trying to factorize each of the qubits out. And then what we will get is the tensor product of one over root two state zero plus state one, which is state plus, uh, tensored three times with itself. Now we can also generate entangled states by using again this state vector class. But then now we can create sums of basis states that at the end are not going to be necessarily factorizable. For example, we can create the sum of state zero zero with state one one. And obviously, for this to be normalized, we need to add a one over root two prefactor. So let's actually import numpy to do that. So let's do square root of one over two times the states. And then we get the equal superposition state zero zero plus one one, which as we know, cannot be factored as two separate states for each of the two qubits. Instead, this is a sum of two of the basis states, state zero zero and state one one of our system. We can also have things that are a bit more subtle, like let's take, for example, the following state, which again, we know is factorizable, we can factor out this zero here, and then we can factor out this one here. And what we'll find is that this is identical to state plus plus. But if we were to simply replace one of this plus signs, let's say for this last state with a minus sign, it turns out that this is no longer factorizable, even though the states look very similar to each other, because we can factorize this zero from these two states to get state zero tensor state plus, and then we can factorize this one to get state one tensor state minus, but we can further factorize that. So there is no way to represent this as two separate states for each of the two qubits. Instead, we get the equivalent of one over root two times state zero tensor plus plus state one tensor minus. And that should give us the same state we have above, which is not a single state for the two separate qubits, but a sum of two separate states for the two qubits. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll generalize the concept of unitaries for more than one qubit.